Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. Once again, I am come back with another interesting topic and that is related to change management process. You know, it's a series going on of the eight episodes, wherein the first one was with respect to the overall engineering process. Then I talked about the five phases of EPQP planning, product design, process design, validation, and then uh, feedback, assessment, and corrective action. And now this one, I'm talking about the change control process. And the last one, that is the eighth one, that will be with respect to what are the challenges that industry faces with respect to new product development process and what can be done about that. Mr. Deming has very rightly said that there are two rules with respect to change. The first rule is that change is inevitable. And the second rule is, everybody will resist the change but what to do we have to accept the change we have to see that to fulfill the customer's requirement as well as the requirements of the other relevant industry parties organization should have a systematic method of understanding what are the changes that is expected they have to do a proper risk analysis and then take action with respect to that and it is in general being observed that as the organization becomes bigger and complex the engineering change process also becomes complex and slower. The smaller the company, the change management process is comparatively more quicker, effective and more relevant. Let's take an example of a stall. Maybe in the morning, the person may be selling something, some religious things, some flowers and other things. By the time it's afternoon, that person may be selling tea or lunch and other things. By evening or late evening, the expectation will change. It will be some sort of some dry fruits or snacks or something like that. So one day a person is making three key and very important engineering changes. But when it comes to an organization, it becomes very difficult and sometimes engineering change takes weeks, months and years also. So in this particular video, I'm going to talk about six and seven key things uh, that what are the possible steps with respect to the change process. And I'll be sharing all that as per ISO 9001, as well as IATA 16949, clause number 75322 and 853. So the first thing is, who can demand the change? So the change can be demanded by customer, it can be demanded by the organization, it may be the supplier or maybe the supply chain, or it can be any other relevant interested parties. Now the second question is, when this change can happen? So it can happen at the time of development process during phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. It can happen once the PPAP lot is being dispatched to the customer. It can happen during mass production. It can happen maybe because of any 5M change, man, machine, material, method, measurement, environment. It can happen because the organization wants to improve the customer satisfaction. These all things can result in this. The third and very pertinent and important thing is that what needs to be done when a change is expected. So when a change is expected, the organization needs to analyze the change. Organization has to do a risk analysis. Based on the risk analysis, organization has to see that what is the impact of that change on the different processes. And based on that, they need to see that how those changes can be implemented effectively so that the customer remains satisfied. Their production line or assembly line does not stop. The proper communication is there with the suppliers also. Now, the next important point is that what needs to be checked after the engineering change. So, there can be different things. It can be fit, function, form, durability to check that whether all the specifications which were specified before now whether they are being met or not. It can be done with the help of validation study. It is also specified in clause number 75322 is that whenever any engineering change is coming, the review should be completed within 10 days. So here the standard is not talking about implementation, but the standard is specifically talking about the review. But it should not happen that we neglect the customer requirement and customer still waits that when that engineering change is going to happen. Then the next is that what are the possible documents that may change in case of any engineering change. So these documents can be with respect to process FME, design FME, process flow chart, control plan. It can be specification sheet, process sheet, control plan. Uh, in case that change is going to impact the instrument, then it can be the 
MS study, measurement system analysis study. If that particular change is impacting a special characteristic, so maybe an SPC study and there can be many more things which can happen in case of any change. Since now if we talk specifically with respect to the automotive sector, there are many embedded software which are there. So it's also important to look into the changes with respect to the revision number of the hardware and software that also needs to be taken care of. So if you see broadly, I talked about that who can propose a change, when the change can happen, how to deal with the change, what are the possible documents that can change, what needs to be checked when the change is happening and the last I talked about the embedded software. Now when an organization implements all those things effectively, what can happen? Certainly the customer will get satisfied, the relationship with customer and organization will improve and the cost effectiveness of the production that will also improve and that will also be taken care of. But if we talk about the practical scenario, what are the present challenges that industry is facing with respect to the change management process? The first and the most important challenge is about the non-usage of cross-functional team approach. Then second thing is that there are many times the changes which are happening in 5M, men, machine, material, method, measurement, as well as environment. Those changes are being changed by the organization, but they are never communicated. The approval is never taken. And even if waiver is required, that is also never taken from the customer, which results in some customer dissatisfaction at a later stage. Then another challenge that is being observed in industry is that whenever we are making any change, how often we are reviewing all the relevant documents and making sure that whether those changes are corrected at every place or not. Because unless and until it is being ensured that once an engineering change is being implemented, all the relevant documents are implemented, all the records are being made, there can be a possibility that later on there can be an issue. Well. This is all about the change control management process. The next and the last video of this particular series will be with respect to what are the challenges that industry is facing with respect to engineering change process or overall new product development process and what can be the possible measure about that. Well, in case you want to understand a little bit more about this video, so there is a link below, there is a blog, you will find it there. If you can click it there, you will find more information with respect to this video. And if you are liking this video and you want that this kind of video should regularly come to you, so you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. For a long time, I am regularly getting your feedbacks, comments and suggestions. So please continue that. They are extremely useful to improve the videos and to improve the quality of the blogs also. Thank you.